Hey folks, my name is Joey. I'm a crafter, 3D printer, and a collector of model trains, and I'm going to show you how I build a variety of different things. I uploaded the model into Kira and rotated it so it's sitting on the nose of the car or the truck I should say and then I moved it down to a, a spot that I felt comfortable with and I made sure it was on 0.2 millimeters an infill of 20 percent so, um, I had a skirt on and then I went all the way down to special experimental mode and then I turned on Adaptive layering. I've talked about this briefly in a previous video, but what adaptive layering does is When you slice the model it slices it so it's a mix of high layer count and a low layer count As opposed to all one layer thickness it makes a variable layer size So right here it shows that it's going to be anywhere from 0 0.04 millimeters to 0.24 millimeters and anything in yellow is going to be thick layer lines, anything in blue is going to be small layer lines, and that, as you see on that chart. So now to get the dimensions that I needed for the nose of the truck, what I did was at, and got the original layer height of the model, and then took that and subtracted it by the number that I originally dragged it down to on the tail end of the truck. And then I got the number that I needed for the nose of the truck to be moved down to. The first video you see here is me printing the tail end of the truck. Then the next two videos are me attempting to print the front end of the truck. And both times they failed. And I wasn't understanding why until I realized I had a clog all the way up in the Bowden tube of the printer. I, once I fixed that, my prints started coming out great. This is the front end of the truck being printed. And then next is the ice cream cone being printed. Here's what the two pieces of the truck look like before I glued them together. I then glued them together and did exactly what I did last time. Used squadron putty and filled in all the cracks and seams and got rid of all the layer lines. And then I started sanding the model. And I made sure to make it much smoother than I did the last one. Because I did notice, I noticed a lot of little layer lines and imperfections that I left in there that I probably could have fixed and made better. I next started looking for images that I could use on the side of the car, on the side of the truck. I started by googling an image of Mr. Freeze's henchman and I wanted Mr. Freeze's henchman to be in a blue jacket but I couldn't find anything so the next image that came into my mind was Harrison Ford in the movie Star Wars episode 5 when they're on a hawk. To get the image size I imported it into my model in SketchUp and scaled it to the size that I thought was proportionate. And then I took that image 
got rid of the background, cut off his face, and then changed the hue of the one of one image, and then put the face back on. So it didn't look like the face was messed up. I wanted that to be on the more bluish hue. And then I imported him into pages and made a steering wheel with a circle using a brown border on it. And then I got rid of what I didn't, else I didn't need. And then I made the um, took the other images. I got an image of the um, ice cream truck from the TV series of Batman in from the 60s. That was the ice cream truck that he drove in the 60s television series. And I was inspired by that by that. And then I have looked up an image of the menu board. And then I also got a I made a rounded edge rectangle for the section where the kids pick up the ice cream. And then I have two windows in the back and one of them is Mr. Freeze staring out of it, pointing his gun because he's going to be shooting the freeze ray. I really wanted him to be sticking out of the model, but it, I realized it would have been too small and not enough and a lot of detail that I really couldn't be able to replicate at this time. So I just have it as an image. But I, once I make this into the diorama that I said, I will have the freeze ray be, coming out the back. Hit cream. And when I pulled the masking tape up to, from the chrome, it pulled off all the chrome. So I repainted it with the acrylic silver that I had on and But one day I will redo that in chrome. And then I took a mixture of Mod Podge and blue acrylic paint to make the windshield. Mod Podge is a glue-like material. or It's great. I love it. it you could use it as a, a sealer, a, a finish. You, works m many different ways. It's fantastic. And what it, when mixing it into the paint, what that does is it makes it dry faster when it's painted onto the product and gives it also more of a nicer finish. Then I cut and, cut and glued all the pieces onto the model into their respective spots. And then I brushed on top of it a coat of Mod Podge to seal it on. I then painted the ice cream cone. The ice cream cone has a base spray color of the same the same color as the ice cream truck. I only painted the cone and then I used paint pens to do the the pupils, the nose and clean up the mouth because I got a a little bit of paint on the teeth that I didn't want. Here's what the finished cone looks like. And then here's what it looks like glued together before I clear coated it. Then I sprayed it with a clear coat and attached the wheels. Here's what the final product looks like.
Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.